My name is Layla and I'll be guiding us through this ecumenical service in Fairtrade Fortnite. Whoever you are, wherever you may be, and no matter where you find yourself on this glorious journey into God's reality, you are welcome and loved. I'm a Catholic and what a blessing that all of us taking part today are wonderfully diverse in terms of religion, gender and identity. The psalmist exhorts us to praise the name of the Lord from the rising to the setting of the sun, while calling us to witness how God raises the poor and the needy from the dust. Do not trust in the idols of silver and gold, says the psalmist, but trust in God alone. Today, we gather to worship the God who shows us a preferential option for the widow, for the enslaved, for the oppressed, and for those stuck in a prison of debt. And so we come with faith and with determination, setting aside all fears and anxiety, and even demands to solve the world's problems on our own. We come expecting to meet the living God in the purpose of Jesus through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And we sing together our opening hymn, I Dream of a Church. church that awakens God's vision of a people who live without counting the cost that trust in the spirit of Christ Jesus mission to uplift the oppressed with good news for the skirt made from light cosmic sky like prophets of old who lead people by dancing unafraid of the pharaohs and throned up on high we sing in a church that cracks up with God's laughter that rejoices in justice and shares all for free, turns over the tables of money's disaster, an abundance of mirth in a new jubilee. We work for a church that connects through Christ's caring as she shelters and loves the unloved refuge. Church that shines light on corruption, then daring to forgive and embrace them in God's family. Dear God, would you make us a people like Jesus with his trust in your kingdom of unfailing grace? A first reading. Our first reading is from Hebrew Scriptures, the book of Micah, chapter 6, various verses. Hear what the Lord says, Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. I sent before you Moses, Aaron and Miriam. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the Most High? Shall I come before the Lord with burnt offerings? Has not the Most High told you, O mortal, what is good 
and what the Lord requires of you. Surely that is to do justice, to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Phoebe in Scotland with our second reading. Today I'm reading from Matthew chapter 5 verses 43 to 48. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be the sons of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Amen. Let's come before God in prayer. Creator God, we look around our world. We can see our homes in city or in the country. In them and around them, we can marvel at the beauty of your creation if we just open our eyes. Through the wonders of digital technology, we can see the world far from us too and the ecosystems living in it. Yet we are also the ones who have caused chaos and harm to these beautiful places and to flora and fauna within them. Give us eyes that see beyond the beauty. You have given us enough land to feed our population, yet many go hungry. You have given us wealth, yet we're often slow to share. You have given us the ability to look outwards and to see where others need help. But often we only look at our own lives. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we do not open our eyes and when, as a parent, we make your heart sad at our selfish nature. Touch our eyes afresh today and enable us to see what you have created. Help us nurture and care for our world and all that lives on this beautiful planet we call home. Help us to seek always for justice and fairness for places and people and to make this world a better place. Amen. Join together to sing our second hymn, God, the Maker of the Heavens.
It's good to be sharing in this ecumenical service of worship with you. I'm Kevin Snaman from the United Reformed Church in the UK. And wherever you are in the world, and indeed wherever you are on life's journey, you are very welcome in this virtual space. I grew up in South Africa, and I do pine after the African bushveld. It gets into your soul, and those of you who have been will know what I'm talking about. I love the evening chorus of the guinea fowl or the dazzling flight of lilac breast rollers and sitting quietly at a waterhole watching the majestic elephants come down to drink or watching the busting wildebeest jostling one another to get the best spot for a cooling drink. One of my roles in the United Reformed Church is oversight of our global justice program and I can tell you that we in the mission team have sleepless nights over the threat posed by climate disruption not only for the wild places of the earth, but also for the lives of farmers in some of the most vulnerable regions of the world. Places like Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua, not to mention Bangladesh, Zimbabwe and others. We know that these farmers and their families have contributed least to the climate emergency, but they are kind of at the forefront, at the face of the very worst effects of the crisis. The rise of COVID has torn aside our comforting illusion that the global economic system can somehow be made to work for the poorest. If anything, inequality has grown infinitely worse. Ethiopian Dr. Tedros is right to point out and to warn of the enormous moral failure of rich countries who get to vaccinate their people long before our sisters and brothers in, let's not call them poor countries, let's call them what they are, they are the exploited countries. We in the global north are behaving no better than those bullying wildebeest, shoving aside the weaker ones to get down to the water first. So yes, while we do love mercy, and we may even want to believe that we walk humbly with God, but are we doing justice? Fair trade is an attempt to do justice, we know that. But why are farmers still struggling? Why is our trading system still balanced in favor of the powerful few? Farmers are finding the rate of climate change far greater than their ability to mitigate its effect or to adapt. And yet, even as we beg companies and consumers to pay a little bit more for their favorite drink or snack to help these farmers escape poverty and to adapt to the environmental shocks, Still, the strongest are enabled, indeed encouraged by the system, to shove their way to the front of the queue. The irony is, of course, that many indigenous farmers know their lands, they know their, their techniques, they know their, their crops far better than we do. They are eco-aware in ways that we can't begin to imagine. But somehow, our economic system encourages those people to ignore the indigenous knowledge in pursuit of profits for large corporations. Fair trade is one of the few pushbacks against the system. It is one small attempt to bring about some kind of equity in what is a relentlessly unequal economic environment. But we do need so much more. As a Christian, I want to start with Jesus. But I do think that the way that we've been taught the gospel is a problem. Certainly the way that I was taught to read the Bible growing up in Africa well, would have been consonant with David Livingston's three C's in a civilization, commerce, and Christianity. But as African womanist theologian Isabel Peary reminds us, Africans by and large experience the gospel as a tool of colonialism, of racism, of sexism, of classism, and indeed of exclusivism. The author of The Color Purple, Alice Walker, tells us this. When I was 13, I stopped going to church because I felt that they had taken this huge, amazing, incredible godness and whittled it down uh, and stuck it into a church every Sunday when people were really too tired to listen and fell asleep because they were exhausted from still being slaves. Our mission team in the ORC is grappling with the growing realization of the deep and largely unconscious nature of white privilege we've discovered that we are still deeply complicit in the legacies of the transatlantic slave trade. All of us benefit from the way our economic systems are arranged precisely because they still reflect the inequalities of those awful times. You do know 
that the flow of wealth to this day is out of the global south and into the impossibly deep pockets of the wealthy nations. And again, one of the few ways we have at our disposal to, to address some of these deep, deep concerns is to choose fair trade. That is how, in the short term at any rate, we can work to improve the livelihoods of farmers and producers. We also know that buying fair trade can assist farmers in their environmental adaptation. Fair trade tries to provide farmers with a decent standard of living, enough to cover all their farming costs and to cover the costs of the basic human rights like a nutritious diet, children's education and health care. But the environmental crisis is not going away and so we need change at a far deeper level. Or rather, we need them changes at multiple levels if we are to truly do justice. And so we need a transformation of the global economic architecture away from interest-bearing debt. We need to change the story of our human purpose in the universe. We need to reconnect with our rightful place in the Earth's ecosystems. And by the way, that's not at the top. And then we need at our core to allow for a deep transformation at the spiritual level. Jesus was pointing out a similar need for transformation in his hearers. Why do you only pray for those who love you? It is not enough to be concerned only for those who are like you. You must pray and act for those who are outside your group, even if they persecute you. Erna Kim Hackett warns about the way people who grew up reading the Bible like me, and she calls it Disney princess theology. Why is it, she asks, that many Christians see themselves as the princess in every story? They are Esther, never Xerxes or Haman. They are Peter, never Judas. They are women anointing Jesus' feet, never the Pharisees. They are the slaves escaping from Egypt and never Pharaoh. And it means that the people in power, she goes on to say, have no lens for locating themselves rightly in scripture or in society. And it has made them blind and utterly ill-equipped to engage in issues of power and injustice. I am challenged then to work for justice at more than one level at a time. I want to support fair trade. I want to make sure that the wealthiest pay their fair share of tax, or indeed more than their fair share. I want to work immediately for substantial debt relief for the poor. I also want to work for an economics of life that overturns the tables of the debt-based economic system, in which the wildebeest are free to hold all the water for themselves. But at a much deeper level, I will be praying for the breaking in of the kingdom where things like fair trade will no longer be required because all have learnt that abundance and sharing are far better than artificial scarcity, competition and hoarding. I pray for a fundamental transformation of the heart that both heals the planet and orders those rowdy wildebeest. Will you pray and work with me? so that all can share the waterhole equally. Amen. Let us take time to reflect and meditate in silence. Fair trade on its own cannot and will not solve the deep economic injustices of the current system. Our economics destroys forests and oceans in order to enrich the 1%. But while fair trade cannot remove the consequences of this unjust system, things like debt, inequality, racism and white privilege, nevertheless, fair trade sets a direction. It makes a promise. It points us towards somewhere with hope. So as people of faith, in this space of all that works against life in all of its fullness, let us not neglect to take that first step. Let us support fair trade. Let us pray. 
We pray for farmers and producers across the world who are living with the ravages and fear of climate change, threatening their livelihoods and income. Gweddi yw'n dros deuluoedd a phlant, sy'n gweld i cnydan methu yng nghanol stormydd a llifogydd a sychder, ac sy'n byw o ddydd i ddydd heb wybod o le y mae eu pryd bwyd nesaf yn dod. We pray for world leaders and scientists. Having seen how politicians are able to respond to emergencies like COVID-19 with substantial funding and support, we pray that they will also respond to the climate emergency with the same level of speed, commitment and investment to enable countries to recover from the pandemic sustainably, cleanly and fairly. Gweddi yw'n dros bob mudiad sy'n gweithio ar lawr gwlad mewn cymunedau tlawd i ganfod a hybu dillia am geno am eithu i warchod y ddeiar ac am ddiffyn yr amgylchedd ac i sicrhau ffyniant y bobl. And we pray for ourselves that our commitment to justice may bear fruit in our lives, in the choices we make and in the priorities we set ourselves. Gweddi yw'n dros y mudiad masnach deg, dros bawb sy'n ymgyrchu ac yn lledeinu'r neges, bod i'n cariad at ein gilydd ac at dy greiad digaeth di, ddyfnhau ein hymrwymiad a'n penderfyniad, er mwyn ein lleisiau gynyddu ac i rym ein hymgyrchu barhau i dyfu. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Join in together for our final hymn. Let us bless one another as we say together, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be at your back, the rain fall gentle upon the earth. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand.